If you like Academic Agent's content on this channel, sign up for a course on the Academic Agency. He's now offering Foundations of Economics. Click the link in the show description and level up your econ knowledge. The basic structure in all societies has involved forecasts, priests, warriors, merchants, and peasants. One group must be dominant and hold power. At different times and different places, priests have held power. At others, it has been warriors. At others still, the peasants. But today, I want to focus on the merchants, and specifically, why it is that the ultimate preference in terms of political form for the merchants is liberal democracy. First, let's make one thing clear. All regimes require all forecasts to function. There will always be one in ultimate control, but supported by at least one of the others. And in the most successful cases, all four work in tandem at peace with the fact that the ruling caste is in power. In most times and in most places, merchants have been unpopular. In the early medieval era, they were held in check by a coalition of warrior aristocrats and priests, to whom the peasants had sworn allegiance in such a way that severely reduced the sphere of influence that the merchant might exert. Here, warrior aristocrats were in power with support from the priests. In the later medieval period and into the Renaissance, the merchants were able to curry favour with the warrior aristocrats and displace the priests as the key supporters of those in power. In some cases, such as in Spain, the priests won this tussle to be the main supporters of the aristocrats and the merchants were expelled. In other places, such as in England, the merchants came largely to supplant the priests entirely. However, warrior aristocrats and merchants have natural points of conflict, which means that this coalition is necessarily short-lived. The merchants will not enjoy a situation where might is seen to make right, because this is where they are weak. They need a situation in which peace is seen as the norm and prosperity is seen as the goal, rather than such values as chivalry or honour, and a situation in which war and conquest are not seen as evils to be avoided, but glorious endeavours to be fought in the name of higher ideals. The merchant values and aristocratic values are at odds in other ways also. The merchant values industry, proportional reward for his own efforts, and to use cunning or bribery to settle conflicts. The aristocrat values rank, birthright, and a largely static hierarchy in whose service he and everyone else pledges their life, and to use the sword or the lance to settle conflicts. The typical political unit for the aristocrat is the prince. The typical political unit for the merchant is the minister. As Frederick the Great, a warrior king himself, put it, in a state like this, one that the prince conducts his affairs himself, because if he is clever... He merely pursues the interest of the state, whereas a minister always follows ulterior motives that touch upon his own interests. Incidentally, this is the exact argument made in Hans Hermann Hoppe's Democracy the God That Failed. And in this we come to see why the merchant may prefer a system like liberal democracy to monarchy. A minister is easier to bribe than a king or a duke who has a vested interest in his land. The king may feel a natural affinity to his subject in a way that a minister never will. Okay, so why not a non-democratic system reliant on paid-off technocratic leaders? A formal oligarchy, if you will. Why democracy? Well, this is quite simple to answer. Democracy is the only system in which the peasantry is given the illusion of power and not explicitly told that they are being ruled from above and that they must submit to said rulers. Democracy tells the plebs that they have an equal stake in society and a right to select their leaders and are, in fact, sovereign. In fact, it is the peasants who are the rulers. And obviously this is a lie. Democracy is also the only system in which the leaders are explicitly selected for having the attributes of actors, which is to say professional liars and conmen, rather than other attributes such as strength, valour, virtue or whatever else.
This passage, summarising the thought of Carl Schmitt from Tomislav Sunik's Against Democracy and Equality, should make all this quite clear. He says, The condition of the political process in modern parliamentary democracies is so pitiful because their internal development has reduced all political discourse to shallow formality. Different opinions are no longer debated. Instead, social, financial and economic pressure groups calculate their interests and on the basis of these interests they make compromises and coalitions. A modern politician resembles, according to Schmidt, a manager or an entertainer whose goal is not to persuade his opponent about the validity of his political programme, but primarily to obtain a political majority. Democracy, liberalism, freedom and equality are a smokescreen, no more than clichés designed to mask and perpetuate the moral and political bankruptcy of parliamentary systems. The goal in a liberal democracy is not to persuade your opponent, but to persuade the masses, which gives a clear advantage to anyone who has the means to own the media. If you are wealthy enough to run a national newspaper or a national television news organisation, for example, much less more subtle forms of propaganda, such as movie studios or TV networks, then you have a phenomenal degree of control over the general public, or if you prefer, the peasants, who nominally decide who becomes the leader, a leader who is already in your pocket, a leader that you have already pre-selected for him. In fact, the media and other functions that form ideas, such as academia, what Mencius Moldberg has called the cathedral, come to act as a surrogate priest class for the merchants. So the merchants are the rulers supported by the priests, with the warriors and the peasants subordinated. And I hope this is very clear to anybody who's been paying attention to the past five years. Democracy is also a powerful tool for merchants because they can often control the frame of any discussion and offer the public false binary choices, much like the choice between Pepsi and Coca-Cola is ultimately a choice between two sweet-tasting, fizzy, dark brown liquids. The typical choice between any two candidates in a liberal democracy represents a choice between two slightly different flavours of the same thing and the merchants get paid and the merchants get rewarded no matter who wins. This makes liberal democracy the perfect form for them. Now some people watching this may be thinking okay but hold on AA eh? what about the fact that democracy typically leads to more and more socialism? Surely this is bad for the merchants no? Well actually no it isn't. The most powerful merchants typically benefit whenever the government makes a regulation because it is they who are left with a virtual monopoly after the raising of an entry barrier. When a nation state buys up a particular resource through let's say nationalization because of government efficiency it is only a matter of time before that resource is carved up, parceled off and sold off. Keith Woods has made a very good video showing how this happened in Russia after the collapse of the Soviet Union. In the UK and the USA, the government often grants monopoly contracts to specific companies to do specific things and often at very inflated prices. Recently, we're seeing the Biden administration, an administration which had record levels of merchant backing, outsource core government functions to private entities in ever more naked ways. Some people have begun to notice that the people nominally in power, let's say Joe Biden or Boris Johnson, are not the actual rulers, but rather front men, the managers and entertainers, as Schmidt puts it, who mask and misdirect the public from focusing on the real rulers, who are the merchants, as Killer Mike once put it. Reagan was an actor, not at all a factor Just an employee of the country's real masters Just like the Bushes, Clinton and Obama Just another talking head telling lies on teleprompters If you don't believe the theory, then argue with this logic Why did Reagan and Obama both go after Gaddafi? We invading sovereign soil, going after oil Taking countries is a hobby, paid for by the oil lobby Where's the lie? 
Anyway, it strikes me that liberal democracy is the system that gives the merchants the most power and does so in a way that protects them from the public, which has always hated them. In every time, in every place, including right now. If this situation were ever to change, it would require the coming to power of another caste who could hold the merchants in check. And you can call this whatever you want. Uh, in the 20th century, they called it fascism. At other times in the past, it has gone by other names. But ultimately, you need the warrior caste or a priest class to come and curb the excesses of the merchants using force. Nothing else will stop this situation and certainly there is no solution within liberal democracy for all of the reasons I've outlined within this video. As ever, tell me what you think. I mean, it could be the case that you are quite happy living in the merchant-led society, in the society in which the merchants are the ruling class, uh, the ruling uh, caste if you want. Um, but if that's the case, just admit it and say so and make peace with the establishment. There's no use you um, you know, continuing on any sort of struggle if you're actually ultimately happy with that arrangement. If that's the case, be honest and just say, listen, here are my cards. I chip them in. I make peace with the fact. So be it. Amen. But be honest with yourself and I'll see you next time. Now available at the Academic Agency. Sharpen your analytical mind and your argumentation skills with Foundations of Logic. The course draws on the ancient wisdom of traditional logic that students learned for over 2,000 years, from the time of Aristotle through to the medieval schoolmen right down to the 20th century. Sign up now for a free preview lecture. Be sure to like this video and subscribe. And if you really like my content, maybe consider joining the channel or donating or maybe even buy a mug. I am grateful for all of your support. Now get out.